Let's cut to the chase. These two lenses are optically amazing. I was blown away by what I was getting out of the 24 1.4 DGD and the 20 1.4 DGD N lenses from Sigma for the Sony E mount and L mount alliance. I have taken these out, done some photography with them, and I got to tell you, optically, these are some of the best art lenses we have seen to date. With that, let's get to talking about these two lenses. Before I kick things off, like always, I'm not paid or sponsored unless I tell you guys. Big thanks to Sigma Singapore once again for providing both the E mount and L mount versions of these lenses. And yeah, as I mentioned, I was really impressed. Um, these lenses are designed primarily for astrophotographers, landscape photographers, urban landscape, anybody that wants wide angle photography or even videography for that matter, you're going to really enjoy what you get out of these lenses. They are built like tanks. They are art lenses. They're heavier than I thought they were going to be. I mean, the 24 millimeter comes in around 530 grams, 510 for the uh, Sony E mount. So you can kind of get a gauge there where you're at and the 20 millimeter is even larger than that. I'll talk about all those specs in just a second. And I will show you some photo montages that I've taken with this, with the SL2 and with this uh, Sony Alpha 1. I do have the 24 millimeter here. It is mounted on here to the uh, Sigma FPL and you can get an idea of how it looks. It looks fantastic. This is really, really nice. There's some new features to both of these lenses that I think a lot of you are going to enjoy and I hope to see them in future Sigma lenses out there. But first, let's talk about some of the specs on the 24 millimeter. Here we go. Uh, 17 elements in 14 groups, two FLD elements, one SLD element, four S spherical elements, 11 rounded aperture blades on this. Your uh, minimum aperture is F16. Minimal focusing distance is 25 cm or 9.9 inches. Maximum magnification ratio is 1 to 7.1. Uh, filter size on this is 72 millimeters. And what's cool on both of these lenses now is the filter ring on the front of it actually has bevels so you can actually screw in your circular polarizer, your ND filter, you can screw it into the lens itself. You don't need an adapter ring or anything else like that. It actually screws in right there, which is nice. Um, and this is a, a really a nice attribute. Plus, you can actually put filters on the back of this lens as well. So I don't know if you can see that right there, but you can actually put the filter in and you can remove that. So if you wanna do that for astrophotography, those are available on both the 20 and the 24 millimeter. So one of the cool features I wanna talk about this lens is the MFL switch. Now, this is nice if you're manually focusing and you want to make sure that focusing ring does not get knocked or budged in any way, shape or form, especially if you're doing astrophotography or any sort of landscape photography and you're really fine tuning that focus. Once you fine tune it on the manual focus ring, you hit that switch, you lock it and nothing's gonna happen. Even if you that ring gets budged, your focusing doesn't get moved. It stays as it is. This is a great attribute that we're seeing on both of these lenses. Again, they say it's primarily for astrophotography, but I can see a lot of use cases for this. And yeah, it's really nice to see. Um, also on this, we've got a declick switch as well. So if you're into that and you're out of focus and manual focus switch, and then of course you can lock your aperture as well. So these lenses are stacked with a lot of great features that we're known to see out of the art lenses. And I will tell you this, um, comparing it to the 35 1.4 DGDN lens, I believe that was the last art lens. If I'm not mistaken, correct me in the comment section below though if I'm wrong. This is far better optically than the 35 1.4 in my personal opinion. I found some issues with the 35 1.4 they seem to have correct a lot of that with the 24 and the 20. Now let's talk about the 20 millimeter specs here. We got 17 elements in 15 groups, two SLD elements and three S spherical elements. Again, 11 rounded aperture blades. A minimum aperture is F16. Minimum focusing distance is 23 cm or 9.1 inches. And your maximum magnification ratio is one to 6.1. Filter size is 82 millimeters, which is great also has the same beveled insert on with that on the ring, so you can actually screw in your ND filters or polarizing filters with that as well. You can also remove the back of it and put in your filters if you wanna do that. You have options on both of those ways. The weight of this lens is a little bit hefty. For the L mount, it's 635 grams, and for the Sony E mount, it is 630 grams. So this is heavier than, of course, the 24, and it's also taller. Pretty girthy lens, I gotta say. I mean, there's a lot of good glass in this thing, and optically, you'll see why in just a second. But uh, overall, I was really impressed with this. So what I'm gonna do now is show you a bit of a photo montage that I've taken around Marina Bay Sands area here, some urban landscapes, some buildings, also show you some of the close focusing on this as well, the Boca, and I'll come back with my final thoughts.
All right, as we saw from both of those lenses, they're beautiful, guys. They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, we're still waiting for that 50 millimeter 1.4 and that 70 to 200 from Sigma. I don't know when they're coming, but they seem to want to release every other focal length out there. But I have to say, to give them credit, they did a great job with both of these lenses. And again, if you're into astrophotography, landscape photography, urban landscape, or you just want something wide angle, you're going to really appreciate this. Now, for videographers out there, if you're into autofocusing, this tracks great on both the SL2 and the Sony Alpha 1. I had no issues at all with that. Um, there is a little bit of focus breathing if you want to do some manual focusing on that. But, uh, you know, I mean, primarily you would use these lenses more for autofocus than not but to each their own. Um, but I will say this, they are very, very sharp. So if you want something a little bit softer, I would recommend putting some sort of like mist filter on the front of it because these things are bitingly sharp. That clinical look, you're doing commercial photography or uh, video for that matter, and you need that excellent sharpness that Sigma is known to have and you need that for your work, you're going to really appreciate what these lenses have to offer. Anyway, those are my thoughts on both of these lenses. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you looking to pick these up? Are you still waiting for that 51.4 like I am? Love to hear from you guys. Like always, subscribe to the channel if you can. Like this video, hit that notification bell. More content is coming your way. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.